So two weeks ago, we made a video on the Hario Switch. And in the comment section, there was quite a few people that asked me for an advanced technique or more in-depth technique on how I use the Switch. So today, I'm gonna take one of the coffees that I roasted and we're gonna break down how I use the Switch to maximize the flavor extractions. So if you guys haven't watched the video, there's a link right up there or in the description below so you guys can watch that first. But essentially, the advanced technique involves me playing with the timing of when I press the switch and why I press it. So if you guys don't know, the switch allows me to hold the water in there, which gives it a full immersion. Now certain beans, they give off, they have different properties and sometimes you want to have a longer first drip. So with a switch, we're able to control when the first drip comes out. So we're gonna be using my single pour bean. Now this is more of a coffee that I have for general people. It's a great place to start with. The, it's, a, it's, a, it's a Brazilian coffee that's roasted to a medium level and it gives off a little bit more gases. So the flow rate is actually quite quick. Now with the switch, we can actually use the switch to maximize that because we can now elongate the first drip without actually having to pour too, too, too slowly. So there's a lot of things that we can do, especially for like the darker roast. Um, for the lighter roast, maybe it's not as necessary to have a switch. It's kind of cool though, especially with a stall to fall technique, but for maximizing it, it definitely works best with like the medium coffees and you want to bring out the sweetness without having too long of a brew. But before we continue to the rest of the video, if you guys are new here, my name is Vincent and I'm the head roaster for Tails Coffee. And if you love experimental and educational coffee content, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification so you can get the latest updates on my newest techniques. So the first thing is knowing the size of the dripper. Now, if you guys really want it to be advanced, you can actually switch this glass part out. This is the original one that the switch comes with. And yes, you can just pull it out. So the easiest way is to peel it back slightly and lift. Now, the origami doesn't have this little base that has this little like little hinge and that hooks it in, but the ball essentially works the same. So you can just slip the origami on top. Just leave it there. Um, it works perfectly fine. So if you wanted, you can use the switch with the origami as well. Now, if you want a larger brew, because this is actually slightly smaller than the O2s, you can pop it out as well and slide that in just like that. And they, it fits perfectly, okay, not an issue here. But some of us like to brew smaller cups or if they want to maximize their smaller brews, um, we can be using the glass, the little glass dripper. Let me get this out first. That was loud. Don't worry, didn't break it. It's the smallest one, smallest option, and it fits perfectly instead of the, the, the 0 0.1.5 size pretty much, okay? So uh, today I will actually be using the smaller size, even though we'll be brewing the same size coffee as I normally do, which is 300 grams of water, okay? So this is gonna be really cool. So normally when I brew with a Brazil coffee, yeah, I know it's out of the packaging. I've got a jar of this so you guys can see it. Um, they're slightly larger beans, but normally when I brew with it, it has quite a bit of gases. Um, that's because it is a medium roast. Decently nice chocolate finish. Uh, it's a wash process, so we're looking for something super clean. Nothing too exciting, but a really well balanced cup of coffee. Super smooth, great texture. And it is something like what I call crispy. Crispy is because it has this refreshingness level to it. Um, it's from the texture overall. The bean itself gives off a lot of gases. And when it gives off a lot of gases, sometimes the first couple drips will be really thin and not so flavorful. So. The switch is actually a great option for brewing with it. Now, the reason why I actually use a smaller 01 size today is because I get to pour even closer to it. And being able to pour closer allows me to have less agitation so I can use a slightly higher water temperature to get the best flavors possible. So I've talked a lot about how we control the first drip, but that's really the only selling point to the switch that the other drippers don't have. It's when we can control the first drip. So given that we want to have a longer first drip, I'm gonna to aim to put it, to push the button or to open it at 25 seconds because I really want that nice, richer, deeper kind of timing on it. But it's about these 25 seconds and what I do during these 25 seconds to actually capture 
all the beans flavors. Now, like I said earlier, it has a lot of gases. So we want to look to pour with a, a larger agitation, even though it's gentler by being closer. So for those of you that are a little bit more advanced, you might understand what I'm talking about. Pouring closer allows the pour itself to be more gentle. And that just means it has less agitation. So for us to increase the agitation, we actually have to use it through movement. Movement is starting from the middle and then working our way out quickly and then working our way out back in. Now the switch is really cool because normally if we pour too quickly, it flows a lot faster out. So the first drip is gonna flow a lot faster. But with the switch, like I said, we can control that. So that means we can start in the middle with a super gentle pour, but make sure we get everything agitated really quickly by pouring out towards the edges. Normally, we can't do that because then it flushes the water down. So we're gonna get a very strong first drip with just this technique alone. So let's go over the recipe real quick. We're gonna be using 20 grams of beans and 300 grams of water, but because the zero one is a bit smaller, we're actually only gonna be doing 270 and then we're gonna add 30 grams as a bypass. Now, if you've watched my other bypass videos, I talk about how I don't normally add the full to the full one to 15, but today we're just gonna do that because I feel that after having a stronger first drip, we're gonna need a little bit more to kind of brighten it back up. Now the grind size is gonna be quite fine. We use medium fine grinds. Um, for those that are more numerical, uh, I've, looked, I've looked into it. We're using about 300 microns. So that's the kind of grind size it is. And the water temperature, like I said earlier, because we're able to pour closer and slower, we can use a higher water temperature. So we're gonna be using 93 to 94 today. Um, on my thermometer, I'll read 94. I expect when I finish pouring, it'll probably be closer to a 93. So one to 15 ratio, and let's get right into it. So I've preheated the dripper. We've got the zero one filters from Hario in here. I've got my grinds. We're looking at 20 grams in here, and this is about 94 degrees. I just checked the thermometer. Um, and we're gonna start with it in the closed position. So make sure it's closed. Closes when you have it lifted up, opens when you press the button down. As always, I have to have my trusty sidekick chopstick. We're going to set the grinds as usual. Give that a tap. And we're gonna start the timer right away. And notice how I just start in the middle, super gentle because it's such a small dripper, we get to pour really close to it. And we're gonna be able to pour a little bit faster and work our way out quickly to get that agitation up, get back into the middle. Look at how creamy everything is. And then work our way back out. And once we hit the edges, it's about 25 seconds. We're gonna press it now, get our way back into the middle, move our way back to the edges. You wanna make sure you've pressed all the grinds down. And we just pour to the 270 and that's it. So pouring to the 270 took me about the full minute. We're gonna give it a stir from outside to inside as always. And once it's done, we're gonna do a bypass. So it's done draining. Um, this one actually finished in a minute and 40 seconds. Like I said, darker grinds, they flow really quickly. So being able to control when the first drip came out really, really matters. We're just gonna put this on the side. Got my little thing in the front right there. And I've got, I need a cup guys. Can somebody bring me a cup? I've got the cup, sorry guys, that was uh, my bad. We're gonna tear this. We're gonna add the 30 grams of the bypass into here. And uh, cheers guys, cheers, yeah. So while I drink this coffee, let's just quickly talk about what just happened. So as you saw, the first drip came out at the 25 seconds and the last drip came out at the minute and 41 seconds. So it took me a minute to finish pouring all 270 grams. Quite a quick pour, but quite a quick finish. Um, if you guys wanna see the finished grinds, it looks quite, Nice, actually. We've got ourselves a great shape, a lot of crema, so we know that, that there's quite a bit of thickness to it. None of the grinds are on the sides. Everything was controlled very nicely, so 
we were able to press all the grinds down. Pressing the grinds is actually really important. If it's not under the water, it's not being extracted. So you guys just gotta make sure that you're aggressively pouring in the beginning while it's being close, because this way you get the most gentle stream with the most agitation from the pour. And that's how you get a quick, it's, it's a quick way to make sure all the grinds are wet before you press at the 25 seconds. So I hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown of what I do with a different type of coffee. Um, obviously with different types of beans, you wanna think about how the water reacts with the grinds and then adjust accordingly. With the switch, you're able to play around with the, the these variables and how aggressively you get to pour, which is what makes the switch so versatile. You can literally do a normal pour over and you can create and craft some of the most difficult and complicated ideas because you want the beans to absorb the water in a certain way. So this is how I did it for my single port coffee bean with my single port technique. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, make sure to leave a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments how you managed to maximize your flavors with this switch and uh, catch you guys in the next one. Bye.